Why? Not to do an X or a cross with your straps. Not okay. These are gonna be your best friend. At FDF, we spent years mastering our craft. From precise welding and machining to competing at the highest level of drifting. One, two, three, Every week we'll be giving you our tips, tricks, and all the insider knowledge you need straight from our shop to your screen. Welcome to Just a Tip Tuesday. Welcome back to Just a Tip Tuesday where I'm gonna show you guys how to properly tie down your car in an enclosed trailer or on a open trailer. There are so many misconceptions and I've talked to a lot of guys at the track why not to do an X or a cross with your straps. No offense to the guys that I've told, I'm just here to help people understand why that may be. So I have my son's toy car here, currently in an X configuration and I'm going to simulate what happens while driving a trailer down the road? You're gonna come over bumps, the car is gonna absorb those, go up and down. What is going on with your straps? The straps are essentially creating tension between each other and holding the vehicle on the trailer or in the trailer. But the problem is, as soon as one strap loses tension in an X configuration, you now have lost tension on all other three straps. It is very common to lose tension on one of them just because of the way the car is moving and the way the car is bouncing over bumps and things happen. So I'm gonna show you what happens when I just cut one strap versus the other configuration that I'll show you, which is the proper way to tie down a vehicle. So this is what a lot of people do. And this is what happens when you lose tension on one cross, okay? This strap is now applying force in this direction. And with bumps, you're gonna get the car to then unsettle the rear until this strap is in line with the force of these two. So these two are still applying a load in the forward direction and this strap is trying to pull the car to the side. So in this case, to the right side. Once the car becomes unsettled like this, you now completely lose tension on the front right strap as well because now the straps are like this and the car is completely loosening. So now, if you lose one strap, this one will likely come undone, this one will likely come undone, and then you have one strap left. And I'm sure when you've arrived at a track sometimes, I've seen it before, where the car is just like, you come to a stop and the car is like rolling back and forth and the straps are just doing one of these. Not okay, this is not gonna work. This is the worst way to strap a car and I see way too many people do it. So let's configure this in the proper way that you should be tying your car down. So we've set up the second configuration. This is the best iteration of this configuration that you can set up. There are gonna be three or four options that you can do this configuration with, which I'll show you on my pro car, that are, they're acceptable. They're not gonna be as good as this, but they are definitely acceptable. And we will use a few different styles of straps to show you what you guys should have for your trailer setup. This is the best setup. Four wheels connected to the trailer in opposing directions and attach to the wheel. The reason you want to attach it to the wheel if possible is because as the trailer is articulating over bumps, the trailer suspension and the car suspension is able to be used. So this is going to absorb the bumps while the tension on the straps is not going to be disrupted. Whereas if you would connect it to the chassis, those straps are going to be tensioning and slacking as the car bounces up and down because the suspension is being pulled down by the strap you're gonna hit a bump, the suspension's gonna compress, the strap's gonna loosen, and so on and so forth. So wheels to trailer is the best actual setup. And if I simulate cutting a strap, what's gonna happen is we will lose some tension and we will have a slight shift as we go over some bumps. But the settled position is significantly better as you have two opposing forces that are keeping the car centered in the trailer you could actually get away with only two straps. If you lost this one as well, you would still have a maintained position in the trailer because those two straps are posing against each other and the car, yes, may be able to move slightly this way, but it's unlikely because of the friction of the tires. The car is still going to be constrained forward to back, which is oftentimes what you need to strap a car down for, braking and accelerating. This is the best way, that's the easiest way I could simulate it. Let's go check it out on the actual car and see where should we should be hooking and what type of straps we should be using. We've 
filming? You're a little dusty. I am? Yeah. Oh. That's clear. That's better. So we're out here with a real car and I'm going to show you the worst way to strap a car all the way to the best way. Starting with what it seems like everyone is doing. They're finding a point on their car. They're taking two straps and then they're doing this. I'm just picking a random spot on the arm here. They're going like this and then they're tying it to their trailer and then they're tightening it. And because it looks cool, they think it's great. Oh, look, I did an X. It is absolutely not the way you should be doing it for the reasons I explained with the little, with the little car. So we're going to move on to what is considerably better in any configuration than a cross. And you can go to the chassis, you can go to the suspension, or you can go to the best thing, which would be to the wheel. The reason the wheel is the best is because it's held on by all points of the suspension and it is designed to keep the body of the car connected to the road through the friction of the tire. So it is capable of holding the car. These are gonna be your best friend. These can go around the rim, through the spokes, around suspension, and it's not gonna scuff anything up or wreck anything. So I'm gonna show you where I probably would go on this car specifically, just because this car is ridiculously wide and in an enclosed trailer, it's really difficult to get at the wheels. This car has to go in the trailer backwards because the front is so wide. So I'll show you what I am doing and what has proven to never come loose or do anything like that. I take one of these babies, I wrap it around the bulk of the control arm and then I hook onto this and then I take this strap and then I go all the way to the D-ring that's on the trailer. Now, some trailers are gonna have wheel tracks. That's amazing. Good for you if you have that. That's significantly better. I'll show you what you guys should be doing if you have that setup. It's a very similar setup to what car haulers to hold cars down, but most of us just have D-rings. So this is gonna be a very solid way. Because the load is in line, the strap's not gonna slide anywhere it's going to be pulling directly opposing the the rear which is going to be done in the exact same manner as this so both ends are pulling directly adjacent another option that you can do is take this and go around your wheel so you can take this put it around one of your spokes and you can also grab onto it this way the only reason that you need to be cautious of this is you need to pull in the direction of the wheel if the wheel is in this position as it's pulling, you're obviously going to, it's going to try and roll the car forward. Just make sure when you're pulling on it, the load path is in line. And then the same thing, you can go from here to your D-ring. If you're doing this in the rear, normally that's totally fine in the front. You may notice that this could load your tie rods too much. So you should probably favor the original method that I showed you, but this is acceptable in the rear. And also I am going to the suspension components because the suspension will allow us to absorb the bumps on the chassis without loosening the strap. So for example, if I was to go to the chassis, let's say I hook around this bar and I pull down to my ring with this. As I'm pulling down, I'm gonna compress the suspension. And then as the car goes over bumps, the suspension is gonna compress more and potentially loosen this point. So we don't want to be going to the chassis if at all possible. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what commercial car haulers and stuff use to hold down cars. This is by far the best way to do it. There is a D-ring that this strap could go through and there would be a grate or a track along the entire length of the trailer. Essentially, you'd put this through the D-ring. This would then go over this tire You'd hook it onto the back of the trailer. My finger here is the D-ring. You would then latch this to the trailer and you would simply tighten this up. And then you've held that one wheel constrained to the trailer. You do that on all four corners, it's fast. And it holds the car perfectly down by the tire to the trailer. That is by far the best way. And the other options I showed you are what I would recommend on your standard trailer. I'm gonna show you one more tip that's outside in the trailer. And then from there, we can basically say, you guys now know how to do it properly. No more crosses. Okay, so most trailers have these D-rings in the floor. I see a lot of people put these on there like that. The problem with this is, is if it loosens, it does have the opportunity to come off. 
the best way to connect these is underneath. So if there's any tension at all, you really can't get it off anyway. It takes a lot. So go underneath, that's gonna be better. If there is complete slack, it'll still maintain itself into that D-ring. That is your Just a Tip Tuesday from me. Comment if you have any additional points, people will read those comments and get uh, more advice from you. But basically, that's my opinion. Take it for what it is. We'll see you guys in the next one.